I will work, I'm a chemist, and I build molecules and materials, and I will work it deals with dynamic molecular systems. So motors and machines, but now molecular motors and machines, and these are the size of nanometers, so one billionth of a meter. Now to put it in perspective, we have motors in our cars, in our trains, in our airplanes, in our factories, in the machines. We have motors in our body. The fact that I can lift my arm, that's due to the fact that there are millions of these protein motors. Things go in and out of the cells, transport in the cells. All these things are powered by molecular motors. We move, living things move. But when you take a piece of plastic, yeah, or you take a material or whatever, it does not move. We make all kinds of things. We chemists are extremely good at making things. But to make something that is dynamic, that can move, etc. And so we learned how to build tiny machines, tiny motors. And in fact, we, we, we developed, we discovered the first, as far as we know, the first rotary motor, molecular rotary motor. And with that, we tried to build molecular machines. And together with my colleagues, Fraser Stoddard and Jean-Pierre Sauvage, who use a completely different approach for building tiny machines, uh, we uh, got this magic call from Stockholm. Yeah, this is uh, a very interesting point, this interdisciplinarity. Uh, going back a little bit in time, we started indeed with the idea of making information storage systems, zero one switches. I will discuss this tonight. We started with the process of fission, which is also a switch, eh? but there are millions of them. And uh, to make these artificial systems, we can do the synthesis. I'm a chemist, we can do the synthesis in the lab. But if you want to make, for instance, a device, if you want to put them on surfaces, for instance, or you want to integrate them in materials and so on, you need maybe also other disciplines. So we work together with physics people because they have a clean room, they have uh, techniques where you can measure on surfaces. So that helps us a lot. We also work now a lot with, uh, together with people in uh, biology and the medical school because we build these switches into, for instance, drugs to make switchable drugs that we can make active and deactivate again. And for that, you need to cooperate with people that have different experiences. So, so of course, we cannot have all the uh, uh, how do you call it, disciplines and all the expertise in our own lab. Uh, we are basically chemists and we are, think we are good at making molecules to measure things, to design things, but then for some sophisticated measurements and for instance device fabrication and so, we go to our colleagues in physics or biology or other disciplines. We also team up with theoretical people to do calculations to better understand what we make. Uh, so yes, this interdisciplinary aspect is, is very important these days in science, but with one warning, of course, you should be knowing what you are doing in your own discipline. Yeah? And then it works out. If you bring together people from different disciplines, which are all experts in their own discipline, then you can make a big advance. Yeah, that is, uh, uh, it's always difficult to remember what were these decisive moments where we, 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 we crossed uh, uh, borders. But I, I think uh, uh, one of the, uh, the moments that I remember vividly is where we worked on liquid crystal materials. And I had no experience with liquid crystal materials. And then we used our switches and motors in liquid crystal materials. And suddenly we got completely different effects because in a liquid crystal material, what you know for your displays, eh, in your smartphone, in your flat screen, you get all kinds of uh, mesoscopic effects and amplification over different length scales. And that gave all kinds of new phenomena and that was really uh, wonderful. So suddenly I came into an area which I had not much knowledge, I had to learn, but where we suddenly discovered something yeah, that was not known before. And the nice thing about crossing these kind of borders of disciplines is that you come from a completely different angle, maybe a bit naive sometimes, but maybe giving it a completely different perspective that people have not really thought about.
Yeah, honestly, I was lucky to grow up on a farm in a very remote area on the German border. Behind our farm was uh, wilderness and uh, we uh, experienced the adventure as kids, you know, to play on the farm, to go into uh, the wilderness, to cross borders. I crossed borders there already, you know, literally into, into another country, which was Germany. But uh, uh, this is this is uh, quite a unique situation when you grow up in, a, in such a small village, you know, in such a situation. But you also have to realize that nowadays you can experience many other things, you know, to explore. I think it's not so much about where you are, yeah, in what situation. It's more an open mind to be cur curious, to explore, to want to know, not taking everything for granted, to try to discover, to find out. I was always extremely curious when I was a kid to find out. And of course on a farm you are curious. How is it possible that from such a tiny seed you get a sunflower of three, four meters tall with a beautiful big flower? How is that possible? Uh, reading books, but nowadays uh, looking at internet, looking at your smartphone, discovering things, etc. There is a lot to figure out. If you have a curious mind and if you are open to that, you, you ask a question. The most important thing is ask questions. Why is this? Why do things drop down? You have no idea why things fall down. Even so many years after Newton, eh? hundreds of years after Newton, we still don't know. And, and so I was always, uh, uh, I read already as I think as a young boy, I read about discovery, you know, from Humboldt and, and adventurers, etc. And uh, science fiction and so on. It gives you all kinds of ideas and uh, that helps also in science sometimes eh? to, to think a little bit outside the box is everybody says it's blue and you think but could it also be red uh, you you inspiring teachers helps a lot teachers that that uh, know a little bit more than what is only in the book but can put it in the proper context or challenge you a little bit and say, hey, this is something that is not very well understood. Yeah. So to trigger the minds of of, of the young kids, of the students, and uh, it, it is really wonderful if you have that kind of teachers. I had a, a, a teacher in high school already. Yeah. I will show his picture tonight. Uh, that was uh, very inspiring in this respect because he did with us uh, experiments in the in in the classroom. Yeah. And I saw beautiful crystals and I smelled either nice smells or dirty smells, but it sets you thinking and it's a great experience and I wanted to do experiments myself. And then when I was at the university, I had a professor which was an American and he, he challenged us a lot. And for me that was really good. He said, this is something nobody has done. And maybe, maybe you should try it. And of course you, 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 you should realize that probably is not possible, but, but at least it's challenging. Eh? And then I, when I made my first molecule, and I came to my professor and he said, nobody has ever made this molecule. And I thought, wow, this is fantastic. This is great. You feel so, this feels wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, it was absolutely useless, eh? but it was, <laughs> it was a wonderful, fantastic, fantastic system. To, to have that kind of feeling, eh? Yeah, I worked uh, more than six years at Shell both in Amsterdam and the big shell laboratories and in England in biosciences. But then after six, six and a half years, I, uh, I found myself still so much interested in, in reading about the latest discoveries. So I was reading German American Chemical Society in Angewandte Chemie. What did the people discover in chemistry? And I was a bit more interested in that than industrial chemistries. And I decided that uh, maybe my future would be in academia to build up my own program and to do discoveries, etc. Secondly, I, I wanted to be with students. I, I love to work with students, to, to teach and to discuss with students and so on. And honestly, I have not regretted it. I had a fantastic time in industry. There are really important problems. You can work on something that's really useful for society. But I had this feeling I want to do some discoveries myself and I want to work with students and I consider it a great privilege to work every day with the bright young minds, the, the boys and girls at the university. It's absolutely great.
it might be different for 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 uh, for different people but for me after the university i came to the shell laboratories and that was at that time this was at this big central research facility yeah like bell labs and dupont central research and so they existed still in those days in the 80s and this was for Shell, for instance, was it was like the Catalysis University of the World. They did absolutely fantastic things there, and it was an environment where they had equipment and facilities. They did the most modern things, and then being in an environment with colleagues and scientists that are extremely stimulating, that are challenging, that discuss with you, etc. This is also in a good laboratory or in a good department. You have colleagues, you have not only good students, but you have also good colleagues, you know, where you can discuss with. And you don't always have to agree, but the fact that they challenge each other and, and keep each other sharp, and then together build facilities and so that uh, that you can you know you can do frontier research. Uh, I think this whole all these aspects are important, and it should also be a good atmosphere, yeah, that you drink a beer now and then together. That's also important because science is also about having fun, eh? It's often very difficult. It's fun, lots of hard work. Don't forget. Discoveries are not coming easy, you know. You have many, many mistakes and failures and uncertainty. If you cannot stand uncertainty, don't become a scientist. But you should also have a lot of fun. And you also sometimes celebrate that eh, because you make a discovery, even a small one. That, that's how science works. Now, I'm, I'm not sure if it's a threat so much to the creativity, but what is dangerous is if your fundament is not good. We at the university uh, should have a good fundament in basic science, asking questions about you know, things we don't know. And of course, there should be a good balance. It's fine that there is projects and programs together with industry, societal relevance, etc. But it's difficult to predict what will be important tomorrow or in 10 years from now. And when we train our students, because this is our basic job, eh? training the next generations. Those students, yeah, the boys and girls that will lead our society, that will make the innovations in industry, lead our companies in 10, 20 years from now. If we don't train them for the future, but we only train them for short notice things that we think now is urgent, then this is a bit dangerous, eh? because we should prepare them for the future. So I'm convinced that it's really important that universities have also a task to look forward and to do basic fundamental research. And there should be enough space for that. Because you know, a building, when the foundation is not good, it will collapse. And uh, yes, short-term research, but not necessarily applied research or, I don't like so much applied or fundamental. I like good research and mediocre research. And applied research can also be excellent research. I mean, think about the fuels of the future or battery technology. Yeah? Or how are we going to do information technology in the future? We need new materials, we need new batteries, we need the fuels of the future. Now, some of these challenges are really long-term challenges, although you can see already that they will be directly applicable if we succeed. Yeah? I would love to do something with CO2 and to convert it into a building block or a fuel. This is a real tough challenge, but you a really fundamental challenge, not easy. But we also know if you succeed, it would have been tremendous applications. So it's not so much about that, it, it's about keeping the basis, yeah, the foundation, and work on exciting and excellent science, and look forward. Not tomorrow, but a little bit ahead to the future. That's our task. Yeah, that is always a difficult one because you know there can be enormous frustrations. Science is hard work, you, you get a lot of failures before you succeed. You can have a luck and you get a, a lot of success, but sometimes it takes a while. And uh, of course you have to stimulate each other and encourage each other. And uh, I, I always try, I, I like also to the students to walk on two feet. That is to say, one more tricky thing and one more uh, less risky thing. So at least that you get some success. Because you cannot uh, afford to have three, four years and no single result. Because 
every person would get frustrated. So I always try to build in some, some safety that also there will be uh, some project or something where you get a nice publication and so maybe it's not skyrocketing research but there is so many problems you know to work on and we also work on or try to work a bit in a team eh? so that you team up with some uh, mates in the lab that, uh, that you work together on the project and so to help each other and stimulate each other but in general it's not, not such a problem that you have failures because you learn a lot from it. And of course, you should realize that this is research. If you, if you can predict everything beforehand, you maybe don't want to do that because it doesn't give the satisfaction. Eh? It gives also a fantastic kick eh? when you uh, really accomplish something that has cost a lot of energy and you manage to do it. This is, I think, uh, a bit uh, the kind of, uh, this is the, the playground of science. Yes, we should play. Yeah, but you should also build in a little bit of security that you get sometimes some, some success. But the excitement of being a scientist, doing science, uh, there's never a dull moment. There's always something interesting. And you can learn, you can learn so much. And that's the beauty of science.